Toronto Raptors headed to the NBA Finals, and the fans, not the only ones celebrating. Lucrative business it is being in sports sponsorship, and if your team takes it to all the way, it gets even better. Mark Satoff of Satoff Consultants. Nice, uh, a nice little win here for people who have been backing the Raptors. For sure, for sure. I, uh, I'm not a huge basketball fan, but of course I'm caught up in the excitement of what's going on, and uh, I was thinking about Sun Life and Tangerine and all these brands uh, who have essentially made a bet uh, and they know that they are going to get more exposure as the exposure of the team goes up. And you look at Sun Life, uh, and they're right there. And uh, as somebody in my office pointed out uh, to me today, when you're, in, when you're in hockey, you know, the camera is pretty far away. But I uh, have once or twice, I have a friend who has courtside seats, and so I've sat with you him. you sat courtside. I, I sat, like, right there, and the cameraman is sort of, like, leaning on you. Right, and you're like under the basket, and you realize how close. And so the point is, when you're in basketball, like in hockey, you sort of get the boards, and sometimes the boards will change, either they'll physically change them, but in basketball, you actually see the logo right up close. And the way the funding works is, if you have to buy media spots on, you know, uh, TSN or whatever it is, of course, the more that uh, the team is playing, you're paying every time for the media spot, and that media spot gets more uh, expensive as you get later in the season into the playoffs because more people are watching. But my guess is uh, Sun Life made a deal that is probably an annual deal. And so my guess is, and there may be a little bit of, a, of, of an extra pay if they get into the playoffs, but my guess is they're looking at it and saying it's a great, it's a great thing for them. Now these companies getting this exposure now with the Raptors going as far as they have, uh, do you just sit back and let it sort of happen organically? Or do you, I, I was thinking if, if corporations really do a hard push to the fact that they're tied to the Raptors at this point. Maybe some people balk at that and think that they're they're on the bandwagon, even though they've been there all along. If you're if you're smart, you should do more than uh, just putting your brand out there. You know, we we've actually done work with some very large uh, advertisers in this country, one bank and one telco, trying to help them figure out exactly how to tie their business results to the big sponsorships uh, that they make. And I got to tell you, the short answer is it's very hard. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to prove. So when you look at the Scotiabank deal, I was one of the first people who was sort of scratching my head and sort of said $800 million over a 20-year period. One of the things you notice about the brands that tend to do sponsorship, and sponsorship, as you would imagine, is not very specific. You're not really, I mean, sometimes the sponsorship comes with an ability to do spots or put signs up, but the sponsorship itself is not very specific. All you're really doing is making people feel better about your brand. And so what you see is that you see brands that are not uh, very differentiated doing that because all they have is feeling good. So uh, my clients in the financial service industry won't like this, but Canadian banks are all the same. Generally speaking, Canadian banks are all the same. And so you see Canadian banks doing a lot of sponsorship marketing because a lot of it is about the psychology of when I see their name next to something I like, I like I them. I like them in turn. Telcos in Canada, same thing. Essentially, I mean, of course, there are lots of differences, but essentially, in the consumers, they're all the same. And so you see them doing that, but it's very hard to prove. It's very hard oh. to prove. Here's an interesting one as well. South of the border, Huawei is yeah. public enemy number one. But if you don't follow politics and trade and you're a sports fan, you're uh, given images of Huawei all the time to try to make you feel different, different about it. It's an, it's an interesting thing. It is. So what, what we looked at uh, about Huawei this morning was the fact that they actually started their uh, sponsorship of Hockey Night in Canada before this whole uh, thing uh, happened when they uh, arrested Meng Wanzhou, if that's the right pronunciation. Um, and so they, you have to remember that half of their business is in devices, right? And so they are fighting the war of trying to get governments to trust that they, uh, that they, and I'm one of the people who think, and the Chinese government, will be uh, okay to have the information that passes through your 5G network. And that's half their business, right? The backbone of uh, mobile technology. But the other half is consumer devices. And so they made the bet to do a lot of consumer sponsorship really focused on their devices. I do believe that some portion of consumers also, even though it's not really to their detriment, are also, they don't like the feeling of having a phone that now in the media is portrayed as, you know, has the ability as to get device. things about them as a spying device. device. Yeah. And by the way, I do believe, I'm one of the people who generally believes that we shouldn't put our data in their hands. But certainly it was not done, their sponsorship of Hockey Night in Canada was not done 
because of the crisis, because it predated it. But I think they're saying, geez, you know what? This may help us just a little bit on the consumer side. It's not going to help with government. Always great to have you here, Mark. Great to be here. Mark Satsoff of Satsoff Consultant.